Congruence is an alignment in your thoughts, your words, and your actions. Now, why be congruent? Well, you want to be the realest you, the truest you, the you that's not in resistance to yourself. You know, there's, there's all sorts of external things that you have to deal with that come at you. You know, you want to be able to calibrate. You want to be able to navigate smoothly. But even if you're attacking an obstacle, you know, trying to overcome some adversity, you still want to be congruent. You don't want to change your, your fundamental core beliefs, you know, that you that you know you are internally in order to accommodate for something externally. You know, you want to be able to be you, be comfortable being you, be congruent. If there's any clash between the three of those, you're not being congruent. Now, say an example of congruence. You see a hot guy, you saw the guy, you wanted to go meet him, find out a little bit more. You came up, your thoughts in alignment. This is the guy I'm gonna talk to. Nothing's gonna keep me from talking to him just because, you know, I'm just meeting a new person. There's no judgment, I'm trying to tell you otherwise in your head, going against the way you are want to your your thoughts to be going. There's no confliction in the way you're filtering your words. You're being the most congruent you in alignment with those thoughts and then your actions are following that congruence with your words and your your thoughts by by acting the part and being you not trying to be someone else not trying to put on some swag or some class to try to frame it a different way or be more reserved as opposed to being more confrontational and showing your true self you know that's just one example of being congruent and that's such a great way to go about you know engaging with someone why would you want to stifle yourself thinking one thing I'm gonna really talk to this person but then you know your thoughts are incongruent you know you're like ah but do I really want to ah what are they gonna think you start getting in your head you're judging sorry that's already shaking shaking it right there now now say because you're your thoughts aren't in alignment with what you want. You want to talk to this person. But then you start second guessing and judging yourself. Then when it comes to the words, you're going to be caught in thought. Now you may know what to say. You're like, all right, I'm just in my head right now, but I can still say, I can talk, I can communicate. You think that that'll work, but are you going to be coming across congruently if you're thinking something completely different, if you're stuck in your head? And then your actions, because you're stuck in your head and you're trying to, you know, compensate with your your words, you know, then then your body language isn't going to be congruent. Because you're thinking one way and trying to speak another way, then you're you may try to put on a frame like, all right, I'm confident, I'm a walker with confidence, I'm gonna keep that laser eye contact. But now you're keeping laser eye contact, trying to, you know, be grounded and, and have good body language. But your words are trying to compensate. Your thoughts are trying to compensate. Your body language is trying to compensate. You're not being that congruent person who you initially would be if you would let those things come into alignment. Now let's go to another example. Say in an uh, amazing show I love, Terrace House on Netflix. Highly recommended. Phenomenal. In that show, six people in a house, three guys, three girls, they're interacting, they live there, they never knew each other before they started living there, but every time someone is interested in someone else, they're completely incongruent. They'll be very friendly to the person who they find interest in. There's a girl, a new guy comes to the house, and it's like, oh wow, hmm, I like this guy. Let me, let me try to be friendly and not show that I'm interested at all. And you know that, that incongruence ends up not working out. The guys doing the same thing, being very, very reserved, not really expressing themselves too fully in terms of their intent, you know, oftentimes, oh, let me, let me just be nice. She'll figure it out. The girls are like, he'll figure it out. They never figure it out in a timely manner. Eventually, you know, they do. But it's, it's interesting seeing how much their, their thoughts, their words, and their actions aren't in alignment. And when they are, things skyrocket. The timeline is expedited tenfold. You know, 
a great example of this in in uh, in your life probably is similar to Tara's house where they're not really having the conversations that need to be had, you know, because they're not congruent. Their thoughts, their words, and their actions aren't in alignment. There's miscommunication. There's misunderstanding. In your life, I would assume that there's probably, you know, a couple things where there's a misunderstanding. You know, um, say you are out with the homegirls. Girls night out. Having fun. Turning up. Really enjoying yourself. Your state, your, 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 your inner inner level of, of energy, of, of congruence is at hopefully a, a great, great equilibrium. You know, you're, you're surrounded by people who are feeding into you. You are then feeding into them. You guys are comfortable around each other. So you're not filtering yourself, you're not filtering your thoughts, you're not filtering your words, you're not filtering your actions, you're, you're in a comfortable environment. You know, but but say for example, um, there was some drama within the group. There was a conversation that that was avoided because of some thing that was assumed. Now, are you going to be congruent in that group now, or are you going to be a completely different person? You know, your thoughts are thinking of this supposed drama. You know, when you communicate with your words. They're not going to be in alignment with your true self because there's a filter of drama that you're perceiving your friends with. Whereas before said drama happened, you know, you were all in a state of, of oneness almost. You were far more congruent because you weren't trying to, you know, compensate changing your, your thoughts, changing your words, or changing your actions to, to accommodate for an external thing, the drama. You know, it's, it's you and then the drama's here. You're trying to swerve that drama and still be you without being like, okay, the drama. All right, now I have to think differently than I normally would. I have to feel like I, I speak differently because of the drama and I have to act differently because of the drama. You know, you should still be you, that same you, same normal thoughts, same normal words, same normal actions, congruent, and then address the drama as a separate thing. You shouldn't let that drama inside of your bubble to change the way you're perceiving externally, almost like drama shades on, I am now the drama version of me. I am, I am, I am, I am communicating in, in drama, drama me. This is not the real me. This is not normal me. I'm communicating as drama person. Uh, resistance. R r resistance. And you can't really be your truest self if you're trying to compensate for something else. You know, that congruence will be easily thrown off when you let external stimulus like drama in. A great girl's night out could then be turned very sour. You know, you're being congruent, you're addressing the drama, but you're not being taken over by the drama. And you know, then the other person, like that person hopefully is being congruent, you know, not trying to be elusive, have a conversation with you without, you know, the drama filter, adding a sense of conflict. Instead, you're coming together collaboratively to resolve the problem. You had a conversation. You didn't try to avoid it, compensate for it. You resolve the misunderstanding. And now you can expedite the timeline of what would have been dwelling in a state of incongruence. You know, you're with your friends, you're with your homegirls. You should be non-resistant, you know, to let something like drama dwell and not address it in a, you know, non-combative matter, completely collaborative, you know, just, just to resolve misunderstandings to, to grown adults having conversation. You know, that's, that's the ideal way it should be. Very similar to a solution that would be great for the people in Terrace House if they were to actually have you know, the conversations that needed to be had. You know, the girl who saw the guy actually expressed her interest without having to, you know, beat around the bush. If the guys would stop, you know, being chodes and express their interest without beating around the bush, things would be so much smoother, so much faster progression of relationships that could, could grow and 
people could really engage more congruently with that off their off their shoulder not don't feel like they're carrying around a burden a secret and you know congruence comes in many other forms say you're engaging with two different groups of people your work colleagues and your friends now are you going to be incongruent at work because you feel like you have to be a certain way you know I know you're you're a baddie you're a boss you know you go through life you crush in your path maybe you have a really fun job maybe you're enjoying yourself but maybe you're still filtering yourself through the way that you're engaging with your coworkers. you're like oh I have to be the work me versus the chill me you know there's people who I want to keep it a little bit of a distance because we're acquaintances we're co-workers so I'll I'll not really be me so that they're not as enticed to get to know me then you know you're not being congruent throughout your day your thoughts you'll be thinking about calibrating for things in a way that's not really you you know you're adding extra obstacles between you and these other people you know your words then aren't going to be in alignment with the thoughts of the normal you and your actions then will be trying to compensate for the three of them now say for example it's a situation where you do want to keep distance you know it's totally cool be that version of you like oh no i'm not rocking i'm not messing with these people then it would be congruent for you to keep that distance but say for example you know you see that uh when you're at work you're one way when you're uh, with your friends, you're another way. With your friends, though, you know, you're super open. Comfort level's on 100. You express yourself however you like. No question about it. Why is it that you can't feel that way at work? Be that lit at work. Why are you trying to... Your boss is moody and mean. and You can still be you. And just know not to know not how to not trip out your boss, you know, but still be you. Why change the version of you at work? Be you. Be congruent to you. If you're a rock star, you should be a rock star at work. You should be a rock star when you're with your friends. If you're super chill, you should be chill at work and chill with your friends. If you're super engaging and exuberant, you should still be that you at work still be you with your friends there shouldn't be an environmental stimulus that overtakes you whether it be the environment of the people the environment of the the uh, activity that you're you're partaking in you should still be able to be you and navigate congruently as you you should still say what you think you should still act how you want you should still think that you are you now, a, a huge part in this is being grounded, you know, feeling centered, feeling like you have a great sense of self. You aren't in resistance to your thoughts, your words, your actions, you're being congruent. You know, that's, it's a great way to, to really, really focus yourself from a, a, a point to then go engage externally. Now, let's, 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 uh, talk less about work and more about play hmm another example of congruence no no actually not even an example of congruence let's take hmm how would we go about this if I'm being congruent right now you know I'm sitting here enjoying nature chill but yet so engaged and excited and energized that I'm communicating through the camera. You know, is my body language, I've, I talk with my hands a lot. Am I, are my actions following through with my words? Is my vocal tonality? Hmm. Another great form of checking your congruence. No, 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 not form of checking. A great way to address your congruence. A great way to measure your congruence when engaging with other people is how is your body language, your eye contact, and your vocal tonality? Now, body language, you know, if you're engaged in a conversation and you're being the realest you, if you want to chill, chill. If you want to be, you know, attentive, be attentive. 
if you want to be, you know, expressive, be expressive with your body language, you know, don't, don't let it be hindered, you know, be congruent with your body language as you're communicating with someone, engaging with them, be congruent with your vocal tonality, how excited are you to see them, are you a thousand out of ten excited to see them, it's one of my favorite things, uh, Real Social Dynamics uh, goes into, why is it that when you're in engagement, it's not a thousand out of ten, who would not be that excited to be you, to be talking. You should be that excited to be you, to be talking. The external circumstance shouldn't matter. The fact that you engaged somebody, that you took action, that you're not at home, sitting on your couch, watching Netflix, vegging out, is amazing. You're out in the world living life, being a congruent version of you. A thousand out of 10. Or is your body language, feeling that that energy coming through you is your vocal tonality expressing I'm excited to be here I'm engaged and you don't have to overplay it to you know put on you could be very chill low energy but are you are you still grounded in that you know a thousand out of ten I'm here I'm doing it I'm conquering I'm crushing it or are you a little bit you know questioning am I doing this right am I doing that right how are they perceiving me and then you get stuck in your head, you know. Don't let that be the way. You know, fully be congruent and express yourself through your body language, your vocal tonality, and then also your eye contact. Laser eye contact. Give your full attention, full focus. You know, you're not being creepy. You're not like, like staring at them. You're just being you. You're 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 engaged. Now, say you had a cell phone out. If you're having a conversation, you'd, you know, be distracted by the phone, distracted by the phone, distracted by the phone. Well, why not give them your full attention? You know, just like you would if you didn't have a phone there. Why is it that, you know, breaking eye contact may, uh, may come up? You know, why is it that, you know, pauses and your, your focus on them would go off? You know, you should be really engaged, really congruent. If you want to be in that conversation with them, be there fully. If not, you know. Maybe it's a chiller conversation. You don't need to keep eye contact, but it helps you to express your intent a lot more when you're engaging. If you're really focused, you know, give them, give them that time. You got plenty of time in a day. Imagine how, how much more expression you can have with some good eye contact how much easier it is for your words to follow through with more congruent impact if you're really focused on them in the now instead of thinking you know let your thoughts be as they are you know they will come and go but your eye contact your vocal tonality and your body language are a great way of checking to see how congruent you are are you really engaging or are you not engaged what level are you at how much are you putting yourself into this engagement? You know, when you're talking to that guy, are you really engaged? Are your thoughts, your words, and your actions congruently aligned? So many different ways that you can check up on this. You know, I highly recommend that, you know, you try to be more congruent, to strive to not filter yourself for the people who you're around, and to really dive deep into yourself catch those blind spots where you feel like you're being incongruent you know your thoughts your words your actions aren't aligned there's there's something off that you're compensating for you know you're not really being the truest you the realest you the best you you know use that eye contact use that vocal tonal use that body language to to go a little bit more in depth in the moment you know to check, am I being congruent? How, how's my body language? How's my eye contact? How's my vocal tonality? You know, you're only controlling you. Your brain gives you a lot that you have to process, but you're controlling your brain. Your brain shouldn't be controlling you. Don't get lost in, in your thoughts. You know, you have great vocabulary, great verbal skills. Don't get caught up in your words. You know, you should feel like you're, you know, comfortable in your body. 
You know, let your thoughts, your words, and your actions be in alignment. Don't be in resistance to showing the true you. Really be that you, because you're only gonna live this life once. So why be not in a state of congruence? You know, you think you look good. You're like, mm, I'm a baddie. You can project yourself with that confidence through your vocal tonality, through the way you use your words. Hey, I'm beautiful. I'm gorgeous. I'm a goddess. Your body language can be of, of one who's confident, of one who's walking comfortably in their own skin. You know, you're congruent with that belief through your thoughts, your words, and your actions. I'm a baddie. I'm gorgeous. Look at me as I just stand here, bask in my presence. I'm not trying to hide myself. I'm out here being me. When you project yourself through your voice with confidence in alignment with that body language, your thoughts, one track minded. I'm me. I'm amazing. No one else is better than me. I'm gorgeous. I'm on top of the world. And really, if that's how you are, are you being that congruent all day, every day? Or are you letting external stimulus that enters your bubble, whether it be drama with friends, whether it be uh, new people who you're engaging with, I mean, it's great to have boundaries. That's the point of the bubble. Don't let external stimulus in. You know, you're meeting that new guy. Are you still that congruent, grounded? I'm on top of the world. I'm beautiful. I'm gorgeous. I, I'm, I'm me. You're being graced by my presence. You, I'm seeing if you're worthy, not the other way around. Have your bubble, your boundaries, and then express outward who you really are. Not worrying about what stimulus is going to come back because you're your boundaries are set. When that guy either approves or disapproves, it doesn't shake you. You're still going to be congruent. You're coming with that good energy. You know your worth. But you're, you're being congruent. You're keeping that mentality of, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm great. I'm, I'm amazing. I'm fulfilled. I'm enough as is being myself. Taking that belief and being congruent where you go about your day. Now, you're taking those external things that would have affected your congruence off that pedestal, knocking them off, knocking them off. Any external stimulus can't break your bubble. You know, your congruence has now been uh, established and followed through throughout your day, as opposed to wavering and trying to accommodate for others and change the way you present yourself, the way you think about yourself. You know, instead you're you're really being you. Best you can be. Congruence in your thoughts, your words, and your actions. Um, I guess another example of congruence is being okay with leaving space in between, you know, the way you uh, do things. Just so that way, you know, you're not caught up in reaction. Now, obviously, you want to be authentic. You want to be the realest you, the truest you. You don't want to filter yourself just for some new guy because you think he's really hot. You want to get your foot in the dough. If anything, you should be extra, extra congruent to the you that you normally are. Not in, in a way that, you know, is, how would I say it? In a way that's nicer. No, see, that would be me being congruent. I mean, incongruent. I'm sorry. Why would I try to sugarcoat the fact that you should really be filtering out these chodes and not letting them gain any foothold in your life, you know? It's not you interviewing for them, you auditioning for them, you trying to impress them. It should be completely the other way around. They should be congruent, but you should be congruent in the fact that, you know, there are, as the saying is, many fish in the sea. Just because this guy's hot, has cool hobbies, you know, has great ambitions, you know, has cool friends, does cool stuff, you know, the appeal is there. But you know, you should be good with or without them. There is an abundance 
a limitless amount of opportunity to go engage with other guys. And, you know, hopefully you have multiple hot guys who you're interested in. So you should be the most congruent you are so that you can properly screen them. You know, you don't want to let anybody in your bubble. You know, they may look cool, but they may be a chode. And if you're not projecting a congruent, I don't like chode thought pattern. I do not like this type of behavior that a chode would have. And you're not projecting, you know, I don't like this type of chode energy, body, language, expression through your action, then you will let a chode in if you're trying to be too nice up front instead of having your firewall up and express. You know, I'm a baddie. I'm entitled to only the best of the best. Any weird clinginess, jealousy, you know, codependency, I'm not with that. Your body language, if you believe that, you should be congruent. You should like when they get too too uh, weird around you, you know, you should be straightforward in expressing, ooh, almost with, with open disgust. Not to obviously offend them, but to just show where your boundaries are at. You know, your words, I don't accept these behaviors. These things I don't rock for. If I see them, you're getting shut down. Your thoughts, oh wow, you know, he's really cool. No, is he cool? I don't know. He might be a chode. Now, I'm not saying to go on full defense mode, but really make sure your thoughts, your words, and your actions are there to build your bubble, build your defense, so that your judgment isn't skewed when you're screening new guys. You know, you may give them benefit of the doubt, but that benefit of the doubt, although it is very nice, might be too nice. You might be letting things slip through the cracks that shouldn't be let slip through the cracks. So just be congruent with your boundaries, with your standards, so that you don't run into these problems later down the line. Now, if you're incongruent, you're being a little too nice, you know, your, your, your body language, your actions are showing, you know, hey, boundaries, you know, I'm cool with this, I'm not cool with this, you'll say it, you know, hey, I'm, I'm not cool with this, I'm cool with this, but then your thoughts, maybe, you know, oh, I'm being nice. I should, I should, you know, give them benefit of the doubt. Your thoughts aren't in congruence with your words and your actions. So you're, although you're saying things and acting a certain way, you're not fully internalizing it and embodying it because you're thinking, well, maybe I should be nicer. Maybe I should let this slide, you know, I'm just getting to know them. You know, I don't want to judge them too hard when in reality you should have those thoughts, those words, and those actions fully in alignment say your words you're thinking you know I'm not gonna tolerate no chode activities you know but you don't express it verbally that person doesn't know that your body language is like in, in resistance when some some chodeliness comes up <sighs> but then you know you're not saying ew get away that's disgusting don't cling to me don't be jealous I don't belong to you what are you what are you acting like that for you know, you want to make sure that you're in alignment. Now, say your body language is, isn't isn't congruent. You know, you're you're saying, "Oh, I don't like these things." You're thinking, "Ooh, I don't like this stuff." So you're saying it, you're thinking it, but then you're not acting the part in creating that space when they break your standards. And then if you, you know, do go along with that, and you catch yourself where you're incongruent then you completely save any misunderstandings from happening. You expedite the timeline of screening. Is this guy even worth my time or not? You know, is he a chode or is he lit? And is he willing to, you know, be congruent to a point where I can see that it doesn't clash with my congruency? You know, those standards are met. Those boundaries aren't crossed. You know, your firewall, your bubble, is you congruent? Moving forward, screening, seeing if they're a chode or not, seeing if they're worth any of your time, and not letting any blind spots come up in your thoughts, in your words, or your actions by trying to compensate by being too nice. You know, great way to show yourself some self love, to really not settle. Never settle, shouldn't settle at all. You only deserve the best.
Nothing less. And that's all I want to ever see. You getting the best you deserve. Never settling. Never settling. Ever. Why would you feel like you're worth less? You should be worth more. Worth the most. You're you, the only you you can be. Why not pour into your cup good things, only good things, and yeet, negate, and destroy all negative things, all bad things, things that aren't in alignment with you, your purpose, your path, what you are enjoying. You know, and being congruent is a great way to cut through everything, really having your thoughts, your words, and your actions be in alignment so that way externally, the whole entire world has no confusion as to who you are and what you want. Then those who are in alignment with that will come to you. You'll be able to see them. You'll be able to move forward from there. Those who aren't will come to you and then you'll just negate them. They'll be gone. They'll be out of sight, out of mind. But it takes you really committing to congruence and not letting some biased filters come up that would skew that perception and set you up for failure later. You know, don't settle. Ever. Not for real, for real. Get out of your head, get congruent, and don't settle. You're a goddess. Goddesses are only entitled to the best. They don't settle for less.